By now, the hype for new Pokemon Snap has completely faded, but that does not mean that we should give up on making new discoveries within the game. In New Pokemon Snap's final chapter, full spoilers ahead for New Pokemon Snap's main story, we learn there was a meteor that would hit the Lentil region about 2,000 years ago. Xerneas and the other Illumina Pokemon created a barrier around the region to protect it. The characters then start formulating questions, such as who built the Ruins of Remembrance and for what purpose. We know there were ancient humans who worked alongside these Pokemon, but how exactly did they work together? Hello everyone, my name is Rob Christian, but you can call me Robbie for short, and today I want to focus on this interesting theory from my brilliant boyfriend Alex about the role each Pokemon played in building and protecting these ruins just before the meteor arrived. Don't forget to like the video and comment below what you think about this theory, and subscribe for more fun Pokemon videos. His theory describes the Ruins of Remembrance as a now abandoned laboratory created by the ancient humans, presumably for the purpose of monitoring this incoming meteor. So, the question we are formulating is, what role does each Pokemon represent in building this supposed laboratory? There are 14 total Pokemon you can snap photos of in Aura's Island, but we'll mainly be focusing on 7 of them. The remaining half are all Pokemon that could have easily inhabited these ruins following natural causes. We'll start with Houndoom, whom we see patrolling the area in the very beginning of the level. Houndoom's design is loosely based on a Doberman Pinscher, a breed traditionally used as a guard dog. Therefore, Houndoom's role is quite simple, to guard against and ward off any potential threats in the immediate vicinity that may derail the operation. When reading the description for the research request Houndoom's Breather, Professor Mirror even says, Houndoom always seems to be on guard, keeping an eye on its surroundings. But Houndoom is not their only means of security. Further into the area, we can encounter Sigilyph, patrolling the inside of the ruins, as described by the research request, A Break Between Patrols. Its Pokedex entry across every mainline series game so far consistently addresses Sigilyph as a guardian of an ancient city. Sigilyph here serves as a sort of emissary, keeping watch for intruders, and are essentially used as an alarm system, much like those anti-theft sensors you would see at a retail store. Deeper into the ruins, we will also run into some Golar. We could continue along the line of security, as its Pokedex entry states that it was created to protect people and Pokemon, but I think in this situation Golurk is better suited to act as a laborer, or rather a Pokemon version of a forklift, <laughs> which isn't far off from this Pokemon's lore. Golurk are giant automatons created by injured humans, so it makes sense that they would utilize their strengths to lift heavy objects. But even beings with limitless power can get tired which is where Behem comes in handy. Behem's Pokedex entry says that it uses its psychic power to tamper with and rewrite opponents' memories. So you could say that when we see the psychic type Pokemon communicating with the Golark, it's repairing or rewiring it somehow, giving it new commands, so to speak. You could also think of Behem as a communications relay used to contact the other Illumina Pokemon for help, but I prefer to imagine Behem as Golark's mechanic of choice. An engineer, if you will. At first, Alex thought that Behem could have been used as a power source, but Behem is canonically not as powerful as some other Pokemon in these ruins. This is where Jirachi comes into play. Jirachi can be found as a post-game encounter in the Ruins of Remembrance. It's a powerful Pokemon coveted for its power. I'm sorry. Did y'all catch that? It's a powerful Pokemon coveted for its power. I'm a communications major. I know how to write. <laughs> However, in the movie Pokemon Jirachi Wishmaker, we learn that Jirachi is awake for seven days once every 1,000 years. Maybe they found Jirachi to be an unreliable power source and only used Jirachi as a prototype before resorting to their actual power source, Xerneas. And now we've come full circle with our theory. Humans and Pokemon work together to build this lab so that Xerneas and the other Illumina Pokemon could protect the Lentil region from the meteor. Knowing the roles these Pokemon could have played in this event, the real question is, how did they know there would be a meteor at all? Sure, we could theorize that Xerneas informed them since all the legendary mythical Pokemon in every Pokemon movie can communicate with humans telepathically, but that wouldn't be a very creative way to tie this theory together. Alex kept replaying the level, and the answer finally hit him when he reached level 3 at the Rooms of Remembrance and saw Absol. 
Absol is known as a Pokemon that can sense impending danger. Referencing the Jirachi movie again, spoilers for the entire plot of this movie, Absol comes to alert Ash and his friends about the danger the antagonist poses by wanting to harness Jirachi's power to resurrect Crowdon. In the same manner, we can theorize that they were somehow alerted by Absol about the incoming meteor and started building what we now know as the Ruins of Remembrance. To summarize our now fully realized theory, some of the Pokemon inhabiting the island played a significant role in building this now abandoned laboratory that was designed to stop a meteor from impacting the Lentil region 2,000 years ago. Houndoom and Sigilyph were alarm systems, Golurk was a laborer, Behem played the role of an engineer, and Xerneas was the power source that Jirachi was originally intended to be. And lastly, Absol was the warning sign that ties this entire theory together. It's very interesting to me how the Pokemon in the Ruins of Remembrance were chosen, because every other area in New Pokemon Snap has Pokemon that you would genuinely think to find in those habitats. But Aris Island is an isolated island in the middle of an already small archipelago. So how did a Pokemon like Houndoom even get there? It's a fire type, so it didn't swim there. And this opens up even more questions about the lore for this area that we might not have even thought of. What if Aris Island is a completely artificial island? Maybe it was man-made and that's why Professor Mira couldn't initially find it on the map halfway through the story. It wouldn't be the first time ancient humans built an entire island. Not looking at you, Pokemon Ranger in the Temple of the Sea. I don't know. What do you think? Let me know in the comments and we can figure out this mystery together. If you want to see my boyfriend's mom excel at Pokemon Snap, click the video on the left. If you want a new way to keep track of your progress in new Pokemon Snap, click the video on the right. And subscribe for more fun Pokemon videos. Bye!